you know, we've got, uh, we've got uh, a f fantastic opportunity here to really see where we stand as a football team. Uh, you know, in my four years here, uh, we haven't quite ever opened with a team, uh, you know, like Clemson in terms of, you know, this good of a football team. And so I think it's going to be a great measuring stick for us. Obviously, this is the third time that we've played them uh, in a row, and we've got a kind of a good feel for Clemson and, and what their ideas are. Uh, but I think it's an exciting type of game to open the season with, which again has been a little bit different from the past. So I think our guys are really into it. You know, Sunday's practice was very, very focused and locked in, and and I think that uh, they're they're really in a good place with getting mentally and physically prepared to play this game. We're going to Atlanta, and we're playing in front of uh, a lot of great Auburn fans, and, and uh, so I think the, the venue there is also exciting to our players as well. So we're looking forward to it, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun, and we've got a lot of work to do in the next week before we uh, play Saturday, but we're going to go back to work today, and we're going to continue to try to improve, see what we can do Saturday night. Questions? Coach, how do you how do you keep all the discipline issues from being a distraction for this team, and how taxing is it on you as a coach having to deal with a lot of these? Well, you know what? That's that's part of the job as a coach. Uh, you know, our job is obviously to win games on the field. We know that, but our job is also to help young guys, young and mature guys, grow up and uh, and become men. And so, one of the things that I think we've done here in the past and we'll continue to do that because that's always a point of emphasis for us is that we always have to stay focused on all of the things that uh, you know that matter at that time in terms of preparing for football games during the season uh, obviously um, you know you can let outside things distract you as a football team and as a coaching staff but you know over the years we uh, we've been pretty steadfast in our movement towards staying focused and preparing so we'll do the same here Obviously, my main, main concern is when, you know, you have events off the field that aren't very flattering to your program is to, you know, get help for young guys. That's our job. And to try to grow them up. And uh, so that's what we'll continue to do. Uh, but the distractions or potential distractions on the field uh, will always be very steadfast on how we try to move through those and not let them become the total team distraction. Is this one of these cases where you, you kind of revisit the recruiting process and have a more critical eye when it comes to character, or is this one of those cases where you have good kids making bad choices? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I'll say this, I've said it before. You know, we, the majority of our kids make great decisions, and uh, it's been disappointing with a couple of decisions that have been made out there that obviously don't paint a very flattering picture. Uh, it's very bothersome. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what you try to get accomplished off the field with your players in terms of the importance of doing the right things. But in the same sense, the majority, I'll say it again, the majority of our kids do a great job of that. And so, and I appreciate them. Uh, when they don't, we'll address it. We'll, uh, we're going to try to help them. And uh, obviously, again, help them grow up. So, um, you know, it's part of what, what our job is. And uh, we feel like we do a really good job in terms of monitoring and, and evaluating guys when we bring them in here. And, you know, again, we'll always continue to have that at the forefront of what we want to do. Uh, and we'll continue to educate our guys on choice making. And, you know, again, move forward. Gene, when you, when you have one guy get in trouble, do you have less tolerance for the next guy that, that crosses the line and the next guy that sort of well, I think that it's, you know, every case is individual. I don't think that, uh, you know, on the outside looking in, unless you have all the details, you don't know exactly what, you know, what all of the details are uh, from a cumulative effect. Nobody knows that. And again, that's, you know, that's within everybody's team and how head coaches choose to handle that. But every coach is individual. Every situation is individual and uh, specific in detail and different. And so there's not one cookie cutter way of dealing with every single episode. And so uh, to the outside looking in, that may not make sense, but that's the way it is on the inside.
<laughs> Coach, it seems like this this Clemson game has been kind of a tone setter for the season for them last year, for you guys a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any opinion why that is? And you kind of expect another one to kind of find out where both of you are? You know, it, it, it's kind of, I guess it's just the way it's really unfolded the last two years. You know, 2010, that was really a, that was an eye-opening game for us because we were able to win it, but I felt like we got uh, physically beat, you know, uh, on the lines of scrimmage uh, back in 2010. And that was kind of something that I think catapulted us into understanding what it was going to take to really win this league that year. Uh, for them, you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, the game got away from us in the fourth quarter. And they really, really, you know, played well down the stretch of that game. And that kind of catapulted them into, I think, the next week, you know, win against Florida State the next week and so on and so forth. And it was really, uh, as you said, it was, you know, a kind of a trend-setting game for them, if you will, as they move forward. Uh, this year, uh, it'll be very interesting. I'm really, I, I'm really looking forward to this. Is going to be a great idea. You know, the next week we got to play, you know, an SEC tough SEC West game. So I think this is going to be a great indicator for us, just where we stand. But uh, again, uh, you know, whether that dictates how the rest of your season unfolds or not, you know, you don't know that till December. But you know, for the last two years of history, you know. Have anything to say in it, then it might. Could very well. Coach, even without Sammy Watts, they still have college boy back and running backs. I guess, I mean, looking back at the game last year, I guess, what do you see that you have to do if you take college boy? And well, this is an offense that averaged 33 plus points a game last year. It's an offense that, you know, averages 440 yards a game. That's hard to do. And that's really, really hard to do. So they're very, very explosive. I think one of the things that makes this offense and, and us being in a very similar offense for three years, I think we have a good idea of this. This is an offense that is very explosive. And it's, you know, it's big play potential and big play capabilities is the number one thing that you have to defend against when you go into these games. Uh, now, specifically related to Clemson, you're looking at that type of offense with a lot of guys in key places that can make that happen. So, you know, Sammy Watkins apparently is not playing. I promise you there's a lot of other people on their team that have the capability to make explosive plays. DeAndre Hopkins was a wonderful receiver last year that played very, very well. Andre Ellington at tailback. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And then the guy that, that you know, that runs the show with Taj Boyd. So there's a lot of weapons there. Uh, I don't think they've ever, uh, there's very few cases right now where they've had a problem scoring points and, you know, amassing yards. So, uh, real tough to defend. If Sammy doesn't play, there'll be somebody else that steps up to the plate because they've got a very young, talented football team and they've done a great job recruiting, you know, to fit, fit you know, what they want to do. How much advantage does it have? Do you look at it as an advantage to, to be familiar with this offense and what really help you guys as you well, I think it's. I think it certainly helps. You know, I mean, there's no question that there's things in the offense that we feel, uh, you know, when it comes to a defensive strategy. Brian and I have talked about about what, what's imperative that you stop if you're going to be successful. Well, you can say explosive plays, yes, but that that offense has so many different variations in terms of different types of explosive plays that you're going to have to stop. You don't know which ones you're going to see. I mean, if you made a cut up of us for the last three years on explosive plays that look different from the other ones, you know, you'd have, you know, 120 different plays. So, you know, explosive plays, got to stop them. Definitely helps that we've at least seen and been around it so we know where and how those explosive plays may or could occur. Uh, but again, you got to go out there and stop them and recognize them on game day when everything's moving real fast, and that's a whole different ballgame.